they can do an MRI on your pectorals and determine with statistical significance, so with a 95% confidence, what your one rep maximum of your bench press is just by doing an MRI on your pectoral. So a bigger muscle is a stronger muscle for the most part, period. However, what I'm telling you is kind of a hack. If you have trouble putting on muscle as fast as you want, you're at the right place. My name is Dr. John Jaquish, and I'm gonna help. Today I'm gonna to talk about variable resistance. I need to explain, at least do a brief summary of what variable resistance is. Now, full disclaimer, I have a variable resistance product, but the science of variable resistance has a really spectacular history that most people do not know about. So let me tell you first how I came to the conclusion of variable resistance. So my background, I'm a doctor of biomedical engineering, and about 15 years ago, I developed a system of building bone density. That's now called OsteoStrong. It happens in franchise clinics. There are 300 clinics around the world in 15 different countries. So it's a big successful business that went great. And the way it worked is we would take positions where people would normally absorb high impact forces. So if I'm going to trip and fall, I'm going to put my hands in front of me. And the back of the hand, to be specific, if I have time to react, the back of the hand will be in line with the clavicle and there'll be a 120 degree angle from upper to lower arm. So I can either absorb or produce the greatest amount of force in that position. Also, hands close together, about shoulder width. So when producing these devices and doing the clinical trials that were associated with proving that these things work, when I would, so there, there, was a, there was a clinical trial that was done through the University of East London in, uh, in England. And so I had to go there, make sure that the physicians who were the investigators were using the product correctly. That's really all you're allowed to do when you're the inventor of something or you're involved with a company. Just make sure that if they're running a test, that they run the test correctly and follow and understand how the device works. So when I went there, all the doctors were saying, this is an incredible amount of force we're putting through the human body. So the population was postmenopausal females who have never worked out before. So they started off very weak and they built incredible, I don't want to call it exactly strength because they're just exercising in a very specific position for bone, but they ended up with their lower extremities creating beyond six multiples of body weight. And that was the minimum that they were dealing with. Now, they, of course, they didn't start off that way, but the point that I, the observation I made was that human beings are really powerful in that powerful range of motion, that stronger range of motion. Now, the anabolic positions where we want to go to fatigue, where basically every set of weightlifting ever stimulated anybody was back here in the stretch range of motion. But you have to exhaust first before you can get to that exhaustion in the weaker range of motion. Now, I understood how much more powerful we were in these optimized positions. And I thought, wow, that makes weightlifting kind of a lousy stimulus because really when you lift weights, you pick whatever weight you can handle in the weakest position which really means anything outside of right here is kind of meaningless if you think about it, especially because seven times stronger here than here. Well, if you pick a weight that you can handle here, it's really kind of easy the rest of the time. Well, so what we needed was a weight that's relevant through the entire range of motion. So heavier here, maybe kind of in the middle and maybe a little bit lighter here because then we can go to fatigue and diminishing range. So, I had this thought and I wondered, I, I wonder if there's anything out there that's like, that's like this. If, has anybody tried training in a way where they put more resistance, where they're more powerful, less resistance, where they're less powerful for a more complete exhaustion? Turned out there was a whole library of literature on the subject. It was called a variable resistance. And I came across a guy named Louis Simmons. Louis Simmons started a gym in Columbus, Ohio called West Side Barbell. Now, West Side Barbell, they used variable resistance. So they would put some weight on the 
on the bar and then they put a bunch of bands and they were training power lifters. So if you were far away from your powerlifting meet, you had a lot of bands and a tiny amount of weight. And that ratio changed as you got closer to your event because ultimately they were training people to lift raw weight, not banded weight. However, the most growth happens when they had more banding than regular weight. And I came to the conclusion ultimately that as long as the bottom or stretched position is loaded, that doesn't make a difference if it's banding or if it's weight. What we do want, and there's research that I will put in the description that demonstrates that when you have a higher ratio from bottom to top, you get more growth. So great. So we want to really focus on banded tension and not dead weight tension. So looking at all of the literature and everything that Louis Simmons produced at Westside Barbell, and by the way, Westside Barbell has more world records. This is one location, one gym. The athletes that have come out of there have broken more world records than any country on earth, including the United States. And they now work with me in X3, and their programming is focused on variable resistance with X3, with all the professional athletes they work with, which is almost the entirety of the NFL, some of the NBA, and a lot of mixed martial artists. So I realized that we could approach this in a much better way. So variable resistance. So I looked towards how would I get the heaviest of banding possible? How would we load the body so that we optimize muscle growth and have the absolute minimum amount of joint risk? Then you, the only way to eliminate joint risk completely is do nothing. And that's obviously not something we're going to do because we want results. So this is maximizing results, minimizing the downsides of weightlifting, like joint injury, even soreness. So when exercising like this, you'll be surprised that you're never sore. Well, you're never creating any damage. Also, I'm going to bust a myth right here. Muscle damage has nothing, nothing to do with growth. In fact, when you damage the muscle, when you create micro tears or, or however the damage is described, that actually gives you less of a gross result as opposed to more because first your body needs to attenuate the damage. Then growth happens after that, if at all. So you don't want to damage the muscle. You want to stimulate the muscle. Two different things. As we approach loading the body optimally, the first few repetitions, you hit a heavy weight here. So like when I do a chest press and I've developed to this point, but when I'm doing a chest press, I'm holding 550 pounds here. But as I lower it, it's 300 pounds here. And as I go down even further, it might be like 200 pounds or 175 pounds. Now, as I'm doing this exercise, eventually I just can't get to the top anymore. So I go to fatigue. And then I shorten the range of motion and go to fatigue again. And then I can't get there and I go to fatigue again. That's called diminishing range. So variable resistance with diminishing range, very important. Now, of course, the diminishing range is really going to focus on building muscular size uh, just as opposed to muscular power. So, and you'll see this through the West Side Barbell programming, which is just about to launch. When you stop short, when you don't do the diminishing range, what you do is you really have a more central nervous system effect. So you're able to fire more muscle it will keep you more powerful with less body weight. But if you then do the diminishing range and shorten your reps as you're doing, then that's going to be very hypertrophic. That's going to focus on high amounts of growth. So depending on what your approach is, so if, like if you're a fighter and you need to stay in a weight class, you want to focus on being explosive, you go to fatigue in the stronger range of motion and then stop. But if you want to build more size, which will ultimately get you more strength because a larger muscle is a stronger muscle in all cases. I know somebody will want to argue with that, but there's just not true. In fact, there's another study that I will put in the show notes where they can do an MRI on your pectorals and determine with statistical significance, so with a 95% confidence, what your one rep maximum of your bench press is just by doing an MRI on your pectoral. So, a bigger muscle is a stronger muscle for the most part, period. However, what I'm telling you is kind of a hack. You can stimulate the central nervous system to fire more muscle 
and you will have a slightly higher performing musculature for a period of time. So that's important to keep in mind. But for most of us, we want to build size and strength, and you really want to do that diminishing range. It gives you the benefit of fatiguing more with a fresh muscle. So you may get the benefit of multiple sets in that first set because you're going to momentary muscular fatigue multiple times with different levels of force diminishing towards your body. Very important to understand this. I'm gonna be very repetitive about it. Uh, and, and some of the other videos, I really wanna get this into people's heads. When you train like this, the people who really can't or have so much trouble gaining muscle with regular weights, this will be like the thing. Like you'll do it and oh my God, like I'm growing muscle now. I, I was like that for 20 years. I felt like I was pounding my head against the wall. And then as I was building this medical device for bone density, it was like, oh, if I vary the resistance, I'll be able to get a greater level of fatigue. And maybe, just maybe, my problem is that when I'm in that down position, stretch position, I'm like everybody else and I don't fire much muscle back here. And that's why I'm not stimulating much with weights. But if I vary the resistance and stimulate in diminishing range, I'm going to stimulate a whole lot more of the fibers in the musculature and that's going to trigger growth as opposed to the non-growth I was going through, not going through for many, many years. So I really figured this out and built my first prototype at 40 years old and I've been using variable resistance. I'm 48 right now. So made a absolutely tremendous difference. I have put on about 50, 60 pounds of muscle depending on which measurement tool because the measurement tools for measuring body composition are lousy at best but it's pretty obvious you know when you put on 50 or 60 pounds it's like you changed everything about your body and and everybody notices it's phenomenal so this is the kind of thing that is really going to help you when you're one of those people that's just a hard gainer and i want everybody to focus on what I'm saying, like, how do I get variable resistance? You don't need to buy X3 necessarily. You can train with bands or chains in, in a regular gym environment. It's kind of hard to hook all that stuff up because that regular gym equipment is not designed for it. But people have figured it out and, and, and you can do some looking or there is X3 available, which makes it really simple and easy. If this video helped you, I want you to subscribe and follow. I'm gonna put out videos on a regular basis. I think they're gonna help a whole lot of people, especially if you're one of those people that doesn't just instantly grow from lifting regular weights. We've got the answer for you.